Sons of Gonzo and Rohan, welcome to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna play 2v2 in BFME 1 on the patch 1.06 on the beautiful map Anurian. Let's get it started. Random mirror, we are on the left side. And I hope we're gonna play something different, we played a lot of Rohan lately. I would like to play something else. And it's gonna be Isengard. <laughs> I like Isengard a lot. I like Isengard because Isengard is one of the most aggressive factions in the game. We're gonna start with two furnaces, by the way, almost in every single matchup. Get ready to fight. And we're gonna use our Urukai to grab those mills and always pick up the War Chant from the spellbook as well. In every single situation, in every single matchup, in every single format. 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. Okay, so our ally is Gondo. Isengard Gondo is a great matchup on the map Anorian because we can offer War Chant later on on the Gondo Knights. And I need to ask him to actually send me some uh, soldiers because we are playing against two good factions in this one. It might be to, you know, double Gondo, double Rohan or Gondo Isengard. And in, you know, when the players know what they are doing, they're gonna always target the evil faction. In this case, it's gonna be us. Remember, Urukai are the strongest and the fastest swordsmen in the game. That's why we're gonna be able to catch those soldiers now. If he chooses to fight us, we can always use War Chant. Build a tower for the defense. We're gonna use War Chant and also switch the formation. He's choosing to fight us. He's choosing to fight us. Does this guy know what he's doing? I mean, this is not gonna work out well for you, my friend. Trust me on that one. Urukai are not orcs. Those are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shield broad. And even with the heal, he doesn't have a chance when we have war chanted Urukai. Because again, Urukai are the strongest and the fastest and the tankiest and the best looking and the most awesome sportsman in the game. Okay, maybe not best looking, but you know, the strongest looking at least. Poor soldiers. <laughs> Doesn't stand a chance. It's a mistake from him to take a fight like this. He wasted his heal, he wasted a lot of potential and he was not even able to hurt our economy a little bit. And we are gonna grow rich in this one. The plan is simple, we're gonna save for Lourdes first because I see Rohan. And Rohan is potentially gonna go for some heroes and Lourdes is an anti-hero. So we will get the chance to cripple you know, our uh, opening heroes all the time. Save for Lourdes now, we have almost 800. And once we get 1200 resources collected, Lourdes is gonna be our choice. The most cost efficient hero in the game, by the way. And yeah, um, we are not losing any of our lumber mills. That's actually pretty good for us. I mean, yeah, our ally lost one of the farms, but I believe that's, that's not a big deal, you know. As long as we not lose too much, we can carry this game, no big deal. Isengard early on will need a lot of money and resources to get strong later on, that's why we will need to survive. But we have now a lot of furnaces inside the base. Lourdes is on his way, let's build some sentry towers for defense. And our ally will be able to defend our, so uh, our side anyway with the soldiers and the hobbit. Peregrine took it is. And now free experience for Lords. There we go. We're gonna get Lords at least level two by killing those peasants. And we need to just make more Lambert Mill workers now to get more money collected from this mill at the top side. Lords is gonna be able to two shot those peasants, by the way. Build one more furnace there as soon as we have the money collected. There we go. And the last spot is gonna is gonna be of course safe for the Uru pits. Uh, we will definitely need some pikemen in this one because I believe the Gondor player is gonna eventually get some Gondor knights on the field and will try to keep, kill our mills all the time. And we have to get ready for that. Looks like we, got some more labor scum. we are trying to repair, but I believe this is not gonna be possible. You know, the farm is almost gone. Lords is just moonwalking a little bit, like a madman. But it's fine. He's gonna lose the farm. I mean, it's not our farm, so. <laughs> 
I mean, I, as you can maybe tell, I'm not the best team player in the world. I only care about my resources, but it's the truth, you know? When you are playing evil faction, you need to make sure that you have good resource income because evil factions, otherwise, you're gonna struggle big time. Okay, Lord is level 2 now, that's pretty good. And we are gonna make some uh, crossbow men first. The reason for that is when you when you recruit crossbow men from the Uruk pit, guys, uh, the Uruk pit is gonna level up to level two faster. That's the reason why we are recruiting Uruk, uh, crossbow men to get our Uruk pit to level two as soon as possible to be able to recruit some pikemen as a counter unit to the Gondor Knights later on. Let's make some more towers, shall we? We are in a good spot right now. Lourdes is going to eventually get level 3 after this one. Then we can always draw the sword and use Carnage, which is going to give us the chance to kill almost every other hero in the game besides Aragorn and uh, Gandalf. Look at the damage we are dealing to the buildings. He's going to, hit, he's going to almost be level 4 now. Level 5 is going to be very important because, yeah, I said at the beginning of the game, Isengard and Gondor combination is a pretty good combination, but... The thing is, um, you know, you don't have damage leadership beside the war chant from the spellbook. And Lourdes is gonna change this once he's level 5. Oh, but he won't get the chance to kill this one, actually. And there is no reason of crippling him down, too, because uh, we don't have Carnage available just now. Just use the cripple ability to one-shot one of the Golden Knights, and we're gonna put this crossbow man on top of the wall. Just chase them down. If a lot of money now, we're gonna go for the armory in our base, in the, in the you know, back side of the base, because this way it's gonna be protected much, much better. If also Palantir now. Palantir, what Palantir does, if you don't know, is not only revealing the shroud on the map, but also giving the allied units movement speed bonus. That means, for example, if you're gonna use the Palantir on the horses from our ally, he's gonna be able to catch the Gondor Knights from the opponent, because he's gonna be faster. Which can be pretty nice in a situation like this, you know, Gondor Knights against Gondor Knights. If they would run away normally, we would never be able to catch them, but Palantium is gonna change this. Alright, we can kill this troll, get closer to level 5. Thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel, by the way, guys. We are also streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. The link for that is gonna be in the description down below. Lourdes is pretty strong. A little bit away from getting the, war uh, from getting the leadership unlocked, which is gonna be, again, quite nice. You're gonna lose this mill, unfortunately, but it is how it is. I don't mind that. That's the first time we lose a mill in this game. We have a lot of money. We're gonna go for the heavy armor next, and then forge blades last. Uh, this is one of the matchups in which we're gonna need forge blades because we're gonna be forced to deal with Gondor Knights almost all game long, and with the forge blades on our pikemen, we can make sure to one-shot them. Uh, but still, I don't like to combine crossbow men with the pikemen. They are only good against horses when they trample us. But they are not they are not only slower than the Urukai crossbow men combo, but they are also more vulnerable against archers. Because pikemen in the front side are gonna die quite fast against archers, right? What I like to do instead is I like to make normal combos with crossbow men and Urukai. And I like to make some extra pikemen and put them in between the combos, you know? So now enough camping, we're gonna be aggressive, we're gonna be on the hunt now. We're gonna hunt some Ruhirim and Gondor Knights. Gonna look to cripple down this Eomir if I can. If I can cripple him down, we can always take him down only with Lords, no big deal. Oh, that's unfortunate. Our ally lost one of the one of the Gondor Knights. That's gonna hurt him. I mean, we are just waiting. The thing is, you, you see that, guys? I'm not purchasing upgrades on my units just yet. Why? Because I wanna wait until everything from the armory is purchased. This way I can demolish the armory as soon as possible. Make another spot for a, uh, another furnace. You know? Because if you have the armory up on the field and you start upgrading your units already without, you know, purchasing all the upgrades from the armory, your armory is gonna be remaining in your base for a long time. And pretty, ma pretty much, you know, take a sp Oh, wait a second. We're gonna use Palanti on our ally, ally horses. We need to defend ourselves now. Yes, he he's going for a rush now. He has used heal now on one of the Gondor Knights. It means he has no heal ability available for the second one. Demolish the towers in time. Do not give him experience. Rohirrim are coming too. Nice one, actually. We catch a lot of Gondor Knights there. And one of the battalions has been taken down. We're gonna go for a cripple with the Lords against Eomir. Can we do it? 
Give them Forge Blades. Warchan is available. We're gonna use it on the, our Urkai, by the way. On Pikeman, I mean. And instead of going for the hero, we're gonna kill the Rohirrim Archers first. We're gonna use Lords with the cripple ability. Our, uh, our Pikemen are hitting like a truck now. Look how many we are killing just like that. Use Carnage. And Eomir, goodbye my friends. See you next game. <laughs> just like that, you know. Eomir is so vulnerable against Lords once... I mean, every hero is pretty much vulnerable against Lords once he has Carnage. You know, like mentioned before, Lords is definitely... The most cost-efficient hero in the game. Okay, so we're gonna use industry now to get some more money. Always select three furnaces in your main castle. You can even select more than that in a camp. But we are using a castle, of course, in the map Anorian. Reclaim the lumber mills to, you know, make some more money because we're gonna need money now since we're gonna make combos units to upgrade them. And we might need also Tainted Land in this one, you know, because I believe they are both gonna go for the, tainted, uh, for the Elven Wood. And Elven Wood, guys, if you don't know, is nullifying our leadership bonuses, which we need to, to burst down those Gondor Knights and the Rohit Marches fast enough. If we can't do that, we might lose all the units. That's why it's so important to, first of all, definitely cover the Elven Wood. Alright, he doesn't even have armor yet. Uh, Rohan should be going for Armory first. Uh, fire upgrade is not bad, but you know, that's gonna make the Rohirrim uh, quite, Rohirrim Arches, I mean, quite vulnerable against Lords. Give them uh, always uh, the Vanakiri upgrade. Vanakiri is the best upgrade, by the way, on the Pikemen, if you don't know, because that's gonna make them much, much stronger since they hit level 2, but also they're gonna recover over time. So if you make, if you have to make a choice, always go for Banner first. Oh, <laughs> Gondor Knights are gone, just like that. <laughs> riding into me all right when we are doing a great job defending ourselves we are also chasing down some rohiri marches trying to keep the rohan player busy in the meantime our ally can also focus on the map control and we have one lord we have lords always with one pike minutes you can see right and the reason oh he can't fight this one he can't he took already too much damage and pikemen are the best counter one of the best counters after nazgul's and trolls to the horses and they are forced to retreat and again, we have Banakiri purchase on the spike man. It means they're gonna respawn over time anyway. And look how fast the Rohiri matches are dying to lords, you know? Because they have no heavy armor purchase. Oh, can we cripple? Oh no, we're gonna miss it, so we need to cancel it. Lords' cripple ability, if you don't know, can be missed. Okay, we're gonna now make some combos. Bring the combos also to, to lords. And once again, as you can see, we are making the normal combos, you know, Urukai with crossbow man. We are not gonna make this crossbow man pikeman combination. I don't like them. They are really slow and they are very vulnerable against fire. And this Rohirrim matches now, they have fire. They can also kill our pikeman in the front side very, very quickly. And then Gonda has like a lot of opportunities to dash in against the crossbow man. At some point of the game, of course, we are playing double against double good factions, Gondo and Rohan. At some point of the game, either I have to go for the siege works or my ally has to go for the siege works to break the walls. And the best way to do that is by capturing the middle camp on the map Anorian. So by the middle camp, either me or my ally, and go for the siege weapons. Okay, so Lourdes is level 6. We have pikemen always ready to protect our combos against the Gondor Knights, very important. Micro around. Let's hunt some more Rohirrim matches, shall we? If you don't know, Rohirrim matches are very vulnerable against uh, fire. The thing what they, I mean, they are mobile guys, you know? And that's what they need to use. Like, they have to go for hit and run all the time. But I believe Gondor is trying desperately to achieve something without the help of his ally. And he will be forced to deal with multiple pikemen of mine all the time. And sooner or later, every single furnace in our base is gonna hit level 3. That's gonna make them very tanky and also, every single one of them is gonna act like a tower as well. But you can see what I'm trying to do, right? I'm trying to keep uh, the Rohan player busy. Oh, nice trample into my hole. <laughs> Don't trample me like that. Okay, he's losing a lot. They're in a great spot. We're gonna use industry one more time. And yeah, we're gonna try to keep the Rohan player busy by chasing him down all the time with lords and combos. This way he cannot join Gondor and sport Gondor. 
when it comes to rush our base because if they would go together to my base Rohan would be easily able to kill all my pikemen with the Rohirrim arches with fire or upgrade you know and Gonda can just focus down the buildings that's why we need to play a little bit more aggressively I don't like to be the one who is camping all the time trying to defend himself I would also I also like to put pressure on my opponent Okay, I to be honest with you, I also forgot about the crossbar, man. Let's give them some, you know, heavy armor and forge, please. Just why not? Um, we have good money. We have, you know, we are keeping our meals alive. That's very good. We need to be careful with the pikemen, though. They are quite slow. Oh, he's turning. He's turning. Oh, we need to disengage with the pikemen. Run, 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 run. Oh, we were able to save one of these. Still no heavy armor purchase on this Rohirrim from the Rohan player. And let's send the spike to our base and bring another one to our combos instead. And since the pikeman is level 2, he's gonna respawn over time anyway, so we will not be forced to make another one and invest more and more money this way. Saving units in BFME 1 is very important. Because the thing is, um, they cost so much, like 300 for the for the pikeman and then also a lot of money for the upgrades. So we're gonna lose around more than 1000 actually. If you lose one pikeman with upgrades, that's really unfortunate. So if you can afford it, save them. Okay, I mean, it looks like you want to go for the base rush. But I'm not actually worried about this situation as long as I don't see Rohan supporting him. Because, you know, I have a lot of pikemen in my base. And I will be in a good situation anyway. And soon we will also have the money we need for Saruman. We're going to go for Saruman definitely, who's going to be a nice hero. Against pretty much anything right now very important to demolish the sentry towers in time to deny power points from our opponent otherwise he's gonna get a lot of power points and that's something we don't want to happen and again keep the Rohirrim archers away from our base by chasing them down the floors all the time because we have pikemen we can use them for protection and you can see the furnaces are now about to hit level 3 one of them is already level 3 and two of them are actually level 3 already. That means, um, yeah, every one of them is gonna act like a tower now pretty much very, very soon. As long as we can keep them alive. And we need to also protect the middle now, which is under control from our ally, Gondor player. And he's building up the workshop, that means we're gonna get some trebuchets on the field very soon. And that's gonna give us the chance to go for the siege. None shall stand in our way. No okay. Nice zoom. So, I mean, I would, I would say we are in a great spot. Again, thanks for the follow on the Twitch channel. Appreciate that so much. means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's put pressure. I mean, offense is in most situations the best defense. Let's cripple down this hero, shall we? It looks like they want to take a fight here, which is going to be a mistake. We actually couldn't cripple him. We missed the cripple. <laughs> but shh, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't tell the dwar Don't tell the health. Okay. I mean, Lourdes, very strong. We have almost the money. We have almost, you know, almost 4,500 now. But we're going to upgrade these units as well. Send them to the middle. And now it's going to be the time for us to save for the White Wizard Saruman. Um, and we're going to try to make Isengard victorious. And it looks good. But he is getting now some trebuchets on the field. Our ally, our opponent, Gondor. And that's going to make it really tough. Because combos are very... We're going to use Warchan here. Wait, give me a second. I'm waiting for my ally to actually ride through my combos. And then we will... I mean, our ally has to take down the trebuchets. Let's use Warchan. This way his horses are going to be stronger. And let's commit now for this fight. Oh, but that's what I'm trying to say. You see, the pikemen are getting one-shotted from this trebuchet. They don't even have Firestone upgrade just yet. Imagine if they would have, you know, Firestone purchased. But uh, they are gone now. So it's fine. We can do it over and over again, you know. Over and over again, it's a bad fight to take for this Rohan. We need to. We are also taking a lot of damage, but we are killing a lot of stuff too. We're gonna lose the pikeman, unfortunately. Now we need to disengage. Run, run, run. Elvin Wood is gonna be used from the Gondor player. Our ally was covering this one. We have to keep running away. Lurch is almost dead. Get into safety. We have a lot of leadership here, so taking a fight here for the opening team is a mistake. Our, our ally has to kill this trebuchet, though. Look how fast the Gondonites are going down, because we have so much leadership here. Trust me on that one, guys. 
So what happens here pretty much is Warchan was still active. We have Lourdes damage leadership and we have also the statue in the behind. Which also gives us 100% damage boost. That means, literally, our combos are hitting like an absolute truck. So taking a fight here, even with Gondor Knights with full upgrades, is a big mistake, definitely. Uh, the thing what the enemy team has to be has you know to do is I don't know why they are not just going for my base altogether. Like my base is wide open, of course. I have some pikemen, but once again, the Rohirrim archers from the Rohan player can always kill my pikemen in no time. So let's move out now. Let's go for attack. We don't want to waste time because if we waste time, we will potentially you know be forced to deal with much more rebuchets in the in the near future, and we don't want that to happen. With almost the power points for their reign, we have also the White Wizard Sarumon now finally on the field. Gotta make sure to protect these trebuchets from our ally with the pikemen, very important. And we have also crossbowmen on the field because we couldn't afford many many command points. We are command points almost, as you can see, capped. Gonna make more combos, always keep making units with Eisengard, always keep making units. I like to always have some units in reserve, this way when something goes wrong, I don't want to be there without any units on the field, you know what I'm saying? And once again, our goal here is to keep the trebuchets alive and protected. And now they are also moving with Firestone, we need to try to dodge the incoming damage. Wait for ally to kill these trebuchets, very important, here's two of them. You can say I'm microing with the pikemen to keep our own trebuchets alive and protected against the Gondor Knights. They are getting a lot of power points. Harmon can go for a beautiful. Booyah! Fly away, you fool. <laughs> Sarumon! We have still one trebuchet remaining, and our ally was able to kill the trebuchets from the opponent Gonzo player, which is very, very nice. Rohan has to be protecting his ally's trebuchet against the Gondor Knights, but again. Otherwise, that's not gonna be possible to win against us. They have to be more teamwork thing, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Gonda is gonna use them. Um, you know, I believe they're gonna go for a double land play here. Go for a beautiful visa plus, just like that. Knock them back, knock them down, knock them out. War chant. Hero is down in one shot. The siege continues. It's a bad fight to take for Rohan, by the way, here. And he's gonna go for a base, but we have some pikemen in the gate, as you can see, right? I mean, we lost the trebuchet, but it's fine, because we are in a great spot. We killed the hero from Rohan, which is, of course, very important for us, because that's gonna slow them down big time. Beachcraft. Look, our money. We have almost full command points, we have a lot of money, but we're not gonna stop making units. We need to keep making units, we need to keep upgrading them all the time, just in case something goes wrong big time. And I cannot believe that, but it looks like the opponent Gondor player is not going for Gandalf. He's actually spamming trebuchets all the time. Okay, one part of the wall has been broken, but I don't like to enter the base when only one part is broken. We're gonna use Palantium to see what's coming. And there is one more trebuchet that is, you know, coming. But a big deal, one trebuchet alone can't do much. And our ally will be easily able to take it down. Just try to dodge the incoming damage by moving around with the combos and crossbowmen. Oh, he's using the Alvin Wood. My ally is covering it. We need to also use now. If the opponent is covering it, now is the time for us to use it. It's a horrible fight to take for them now. We have a lot of... Oh, my ally is popping off with the Gandalf. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful wizard blast. He's gonna use Lightning Sword as well, Rohan is losing everything, that's a big and wrong commitment from the Rohan Gondor team, definitely. Because now, we can enter the base and they have nothing to defend themselves. They should be trying to defend in the base, like it's a mistake with the statue, with the well in the base, they might have a chance to defend because look at this, I don't have rangers yet. And Rohan Smash is gonna leave the game. And yeah. Uh, we are waiting for the Warchan, we're gonna just go inside the jeans and finish off the Rohan base in no time. The Gondor player still plays, he has now two bases under his control, has a lot of money of course. But is this gonna be enough to win us now? I don't think so, because I'm really strong now. 
We have Lourdes level 8, Saruman level 5, of course, I mean, that's the level he is actually entering the battlefield from the Isengard faction. Industry is gonna be used again, look, our money. We have some units also in the middle camp of our ally, just in case something goes wrong, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Just focus down the buildings, build the Citadel first, this way he is not able to build anything else in the base, which is, by the way, very important. So, if you wanna kill a base from the good factions or evil factions, doesn't matter. Um, you want to make sure to kill the Zitter first, because if you do that, um, wait a second, where are those Gondonets going actually? Are they going for, to my base? I mean, they can try, because my base has protection, you know? Level 3 furnaces all around the place. You can even buy the base now at the bottom right side. They have a lot of money, as you can see. Look our base, we have level 3 furnaces and stuff, every, every building is pretty much shooting like, and shooting and acting like a tower now at this point of the game. Oh, he's actually gate rushing our ally. <laughs> this guy is desperate, guys. This guy is desperate. <laughs> I mean, that's not gonna work out. Even if he somehow, somehow magically destroys the castle. I mean, my ally is still a camp in the middle, so he wouldn't be defeated. Okay, Gandalf is also coming now from our ally. And you know what? Isengard and Gondor combination feels pretty good. As Boromir would like to see, guys. For Gondor! For Gondor! For Gondor! For Gondor! For Gondor! And for Isengard. Maybe if they would team up in Middle Earth in the actual films, they could be achieving something. Imagine Sauron and Gandalf side by side, face, uh, facing against uh, Sauron. What would you guys what do you guys think? I would like to hear your opinions. What would happen if Saruman wouldn't be evil and if he would be joining with Gandalf and all the good factions like Rohan and Gondor? And they would all team up against Sauron. I feel I feel like uh, you know, considering the fact that Sauron lost even with the help of Saruman, imagine Saruman not helping Sauron. And not keeping Rohan busy and actually moving with Rohan together against Sauron. I think that would be like not even worth to make a film about, you know, because it would be like GG well played. Anyways, go, let's go inside. Fireball is gonna be used against the trebuchet. Let's use Warm Tongue there just to get the control of this trebuchet. You know, we're gonna make him actually kill his own trebuchet with his trebuchet. Now we have this one under our control and kill this one on the wall. <laughs> against the power of Isengard, there can be no victory. I mean, that's gonna be pretty much GG now, he has nothing left in his base. The siege continues, we have a lot of money. Look our money, we have over 8,000 now. Full command points, we have a lot of units in the middle. Again, always keep making units with Isengard. Very, very important. Not only in 1v1, but also in 2v2 and 3v3. The last buildings remaining, our combo is hitting like an absolute track from a very long range. Against the power of Isengard, there can be <laughs> no victory. <laughs> Let's trash talk him a little bit too. Just why not? <laughs> GG well played. Mel Gibson has been defeated. We are victorious with Isengard in the 2v2. Make sure to be to like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and also turn on the notifications. Again, check me out on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. Thank you guys so much for watching. I see you next time. Until then. Take care of yourselves and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace guys.